Today, I will show you how to use multiple time frames, support and resistance to massively improve the odds of winning in your option and stock trades. By the time this video is finished, you will clearly understand how to use multiple time frames, support and resistance to make better, more profitable option and stock trades. I am Randy Perez. I'm a 21 plus year stock and option trader, as well as real estate investor. If you're already a member of our community, thank you for setting aside a part of your day to be here. If you're not already a member of this community, go ahead and click the subscribe button and bell notification. You'll be joining a community of traders and investors that are helping each other become more knowledgeable and profitable. First, why should you be using multiple time frames, support and resistance to trade options and stocks? Let's try this. Take a look at this picture of people playing tug of war. Which side would you rather be on? Of course, we all want to be on the side with the most people, right? The side with the best odds of winning. Using multiple time frames along with support and resistance may not necessarily guarantee that you'll win every trade, but it does greatly improve the odds of your chances of winning those trades. I'm excited to share with you how you can use multiple time frames, support and resistance to be a better, more profitable option and stock trader. What time frames do you use to make your trades? Minute, hourly, daily, or weekly? In the comments below, let me know what your favorite time frames are. Or if you're brand new to trading and you're just starting out, let us know that as well. I'm looking forward to seeing where you're at on this fun subject. And stay tuned until the end of this video where I'll give you a trade I plan to make this week using this exact technique. How does using multiple time frames work? Notice here on the screen on my interactive brokers trading platform, the four different time frames that I look at on every position and every trade. It's important to know why I look at these four different time frames. Once I determine that a company fundamentally is strong enough for me to own a piece of it, or to sell options in it, the next step is to buy at the best price or sell options for the most profit possible in this company. Let's look at an example. ABV, ticker symbol ABBV, is a company that I've been trading for over a year and a half. After I researched it, I decided that I liked the fundamentals of the company and its overall financial situation, as well as the potential that it would give me. But let's say you don't have a position already in this company. Our question is, is it a good time to sell put options against Abby or to buy the stock outright? Let's look at multiple time frames to make this decision. I like to start with the weekly chart. If you look at the weekly chart here at Abby, we see that it has a nice wave-like pattern to the chart. Just like an ocean wave, the prices tend to go up, crest, and then fall back down. That's a pattern you'll see in almost every stock. Where the stock was trending up on this weekly chart, I drew in the white arrows. Where it was trending down, you'll see blue arrows. As you can see, Abby has been in a really nice uptrend since April. But now it's rolled over or the wave's starting to crest and it's starting to come back down. What do you think is going to happen next? Well, in the weekly chart, it appears that Abby will continue to decline some. We do see that the 50 moving average has served as support for this stock earlier this year. So when looking at the weekly chart, we get a pretty good feeling that right now, the Abbey is probably looking to come down to around the 50 moving average area, which is the green line, which is around the $88 price area. Let's switch over and look at the daily chart. Let's see if the daily chart confirms our suspicion that Abbey might come down to approximately the $88 area or so. Notice here on the daily chart that around that $80 price, notice what this stock will encounter if it gets to that price the 200 moving average on the daily chart. As we can see over the past year, that 200 moving average has served as nice support for the stock. If I were looking to buy this stock, in my opinion, right now is not the best time to buy it. The odds are pretty good that Abby is going to come back and test that 200 moving average support on the daily chart, as well as the 50 moving average on the weekly chart. That mark would be around that $88 per share. So if you are only a stock buyer and did not trade options, you have to make a decision. One, you can buy the stock now, knowing that it may decline on you some, but that you're buying a good company. Or two, you can set an alert or limit order to buy it at around that $88 price. Remember, we're not looking at a crystal ball here, but we're trying to put the odds in our favor. And using multiple time frames definitely puts the odds in your favor. It's especially advantageous for option traders. Why? Looking at these multiple time frames, 
we can feel a lot more comfortable selling put options at just below that $88 strike price. Why is that the case? The stock has shown over the past year that when it reaches the 50 moving average on the weekly chart and the 200 moving average on the daily chart, it quite possibly could go below that, but generally, it at least pauses and trades sideways for several weeks. If you're an option trader and usually sell options that are about 30 days out, it is a high probability trade to sell put options below the support that we see here on the daily and weekly chart. But I'm not just going to tell you that it could be a high probability trade. I'm going to show you where I did it. Notice my current positions in Advi. I was assigned 300 shares of the stock about a year ago. Since then, I've been selling call options against the 300 shares I own, as well as selling three additional put options each month to try and bring my account to a full position. The remaining 300 shares have not been assigned to me yet. But notice the strike price that I sold the most recent put options at. On July 7th, I sold the November $85 strike puts right under that 200 moving average on the daily chart and 50 moving average on the weekly chart support line that we just spoke about. The reason I sold the November put options is I've been rolling my short call options up because I want to benefit from the stock price upward movement. By selling this put option under those two support lines, which happen to be the moving averages, we have put the odds in our favor to win on this trade. Our odds would be better if this was a 30-day option, but the reason why I chose the November ones is that I was able to roll my short call strike price up for a credit by trading the November call and put options instead of the 30-day option. Will we win on this trade? We don't know. But have we put the odds in our favor of winning by using multiple time frame support? Absolutely. In just a few minutes, I'm going to show you how to use all four of the time frames that I use to enter a brand new position. But briefly, let's take a look at how we can use multiple time frames to look at resistance or areas where an outright stock owner might want to sell their stock or a covered call or call option trader might want to sell their call options. Lazar ticker symbol LAZ is another stock that I've been trading for several years. The stock was assigned to me earlier this year. Since that time, I've been selling call options against it. Lazar is a company that I want to own for the long term. It pays a nice fat dividend and coupling that with selling call options, I'm able to get an awesome return on this stock. But what is the best strike price to sell call options at? If you are just a stock trader, what would be the best price to sell the stock at? Let's look at multiple time frames resistance to answer those questions. Let's first look at the weekly chart. Notice how multiple times over the past several years, when Lazar got close to or reached the 50 moving average on the weekly chart, that area served as a resistance point. The stock approached it, hung out for a minute, and then went back down again. The one exception was in January and February of this year where it broke out past the 50 moving average, went right above the 200 moving average, ran out of steam, and then came back down. Let's now take a look at the resistance points on the daily chart. Notice how last year, from October until January of this year, the red 200 moving average on the daily chart served as support for the stock. But when the stock broke down in March, it went below that moving average. The 200 moving average has now been serving as strong resistance for the stock. For much of this year, up until June, it did not even approach the 200 moving average. When it finally did approach the 200 moving average in June, it hit it, hung out for a few days, and then came back down. With that knowledge, coupled with what's been going on in the weekly chart, I've been selling call options at the $31 and $32 strike price areas. Notice what is now happening on the daily chart. It has penetrated through the 200 moving average on the daily chart, but notice that it is now running out of steam. And if you look down at the volume, there have been more red down days of the past week than green up days. This stock has temporarily run out of steam on its upward move. But notice that again, this 200 moving average has served as resistance against the stock's upward movement. Now, I actually believe that Lazard has the potential to continue going higher. That's why I've been rolling my short call options up, and I plan to try to do it again this month. But notice how, again, multiple time frames agree that this $32 and $33 area on the weekly and daily chart will serve as resistance for the stock and will be a good place if you're a covered call option trader to sell call options, or if you're a traditional stock trader, it'd be a good place to possibly sell the stock at and pocket your gains. 
Next, we're going to see how you can use up to four time frames to enter a new position. But if you're liking the video, why don't you do me a favor and tap the thumbs up button. It supports the channel and it means a lot to me. And stay tuned in until the end because I'm going to share with you a trade I plan to make this week using this exact strategy of multiple time frame support and resistance to enter into it. Let's continue. In my previous video, I mentioned that I had entered into a new position in Intel ticker symbol INTC. I now want to show you how we use multiple time frames support and resistance to determine when was the right time to enter this position. I also used some of my other favorite technical analysis tools to know when was the right time to enter the position. If you'd like to check out that video, when you're done with this one, the link is above and in the description below. But multiple time frame support was one of the reasons why I entered this position when I did. Let me show you why. Let's first start with the weekly chart. Notice on the screen that since before 2014, Intel has been in a nice uptrend. But notice what happens on the weekly chart every time the stock comes down and approaches the 200 moving average. Either it comes close to it, goes just below it, or hits it almost to the penny, hangs out for a few weeks, and then goes back up. Now I've not been able to trade this stock for almost a year because the prices have been so high. But the opportunity to sell some options or buy some stock came up when once again, Intel got hammered. Notice where the stock came down to, the 200 moving average. Coincidence? I don't think so. Let's now look at the daily chart to see if this indeed is the right time to sell put options on Intel, or if you're a stock trader, to buy the stock. I'm going to switch to my E-Trade platform because the chart will give us longer time frame information than on my interactive broker screen. Notice how over the past several years, every time Intel approached the bottom of this channel that I've drawn, it bounced off the support area at the bottom of that channel. It did it in July and August of 2018, June and July of 2019, again back in March, and now guess what? Ironically, when it got hammered several weeks ago, it came right back to the bottom of that trading channel. All we had to do was wait until the downward momentum slowed, which it did, and then we began selling put options against Intel. I also bought some outright in my retirement account. Well now, let's take a look at the 60 minute and 50 minute chart to see what would be the best time to sell these put options or buy the stock outright. Notice here on the hourly or 60 minute chart that it captures the huge drop from $61 per share down to $47 per share. Once I saw the huge drop, I saw that it was approaching the support on the daily and weekly charts. I then began to watch the hourly and 15 minute chart to know when was the right time to enter a trade. Notice that on July 30th, the stock seemed to be settling down some and the down momentum was beginning to decline. So on July 30th, I began to work my way into a position. I sold two of the $45 strike September puts for $1.32 per share. That was by no means a full position, but it was a starter position. I then watched the stock over the next several weeks and sold more $45 strike put short options on August 11th, as well as yesterday on August 14th. In addition to the weekly, daily, and 60 minute charts all showing that it was a good time to sell put options or buy the stock outright, I looked at the 15 minute chart to enter those positions. Look at what I saw. On August 11th and the 13th, the 15 minute chart showed that the stock was trading above the 50 and 200 moving averages. Do you see how using four time frames has allowed me to enter a position where the odds of winning this trade are really good? On top of that, as an option trader, we didn't need to sell all at the money put options. We sold out of the money $45 strike and $47.5 strike put options. The odds are drastically in our favor of winning on these positions. Is it guaranteed? Of course not. But there's a high probability that we will win on these trades. At the beginning of this video, I told you that I would share with you a trade that I plan to do this week using multiple time frame support and resistance. The trade I want to share with you is in Kraft Heinz, ticker symbol KHC. Let me show you how using multiple time frames support and resistance helps us know that this trade has a high probability of being a winner. For those of you who have been watching my channel, you know that I've been trading this stock for quite a while now. Notice here on the screen that we've been trading this stock since January of this year. As option traders, we started trading it conservatively with put options that were pretty far out of the money until the stock's downward momentum stabilized. 
But now, as you will see on the charts, with multiple time frames showing that this could potentially be a high probability trade, we are now selling at the money put options. And doing this last month, we were able to pocket over $1,000 on just this one position. We have already begun to roll the options that expire this coming Friday, the third Friday of August, by buying to close those $32.5 August puts and selling to open the September $35 put options. For those 200 shares, we've already received $1.69 per share. Now we're about to close out the $35 strike August put options over the next week and to sell to open four more contracts, which equals 400 shares of the September $35 strike puts. Let me show you why this trade is so exciting. Notice how on every time frame, the 15 minute, 60 minute, daily and weekly charts, Kraft Heinz is above the 200 moving average. The only exception is on the weekly chart when it's only above the 50 moving average. With seven out of eight moving averages on four different time frames showing that the stock is in an uptrend, this makes a trade on the stock a very high probability trade. With our knowledge of using multiple time frames support and resistance, we'll roll our August short put position at the $35 strike out to September. We will sell an at the money put option, which should produce an awesome return. The September $35 strike put options we already sold paid us $1.69 per share. We had to pay $0.18 cents per share to buy back the August $35 strike puts, so we pocketed $1.51 per share. If we hold this position until option expiration, which is very unlikely, but if we hold it until the third Friday of September, on September 18th, we will net an annualized 35% cash on cash return. That's the power of using multiple time frames support and resistance to trade stocks and options. Analyzing multiple time frames can take up a good bit of your time. So if you'd like some help with that, consider becoming a patron at the link in the description below. Every weekend we send out our top picks for the week out of the over 160 stocks that we track. I just finished posting this week's list on Patreon of my top stocks that I'll be looking to trade this week. You'd be supporting this channel and receiving awesome information that can help narrow your search of stocks whose technical analysis, including multiple time frames of support and resistance, are lining up the odds in your favor. And a quick shout out and thank you to our four latest Patreon members listed here on the screen. Thank you for your support. I deeply appreciate it. Check out the videos in the link above and the description below where I share with you my top secrets and tips on how to trade options like a pro. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.